I'd like to thank our top sponsors, Dean Anthony, Fergus Ryan, and Anders Marie Christensen for making this show possible. And welcome to the Cave of Apollos. It is no secret that the art world is politically and aesthetically biased. Add the aggression and intolerance of social justice activism, and you get the perfect recipe for yet another purification of society. My guest this evening is an artist with personal experience of the greatest threat to culture in our time. Owen Swambu, welcome to the Cave of Palace. Thank you. I am so happy we could sit down and not the least that you reached out to us. Yeah. Because you are the sort of the, the center of the whole controversy, controversy around the uh, introduction of critical theories at the, well, it's, it's not the Art Academy in Oslo, but it's like the Art and Crafts School. Yeah, it's, it's both actually, yeah. but they, they are technically separate schools, but under the same roof. So it's uh, exactly. you know, administrative yeah, yeah, business. Yeah. And I think, th and this is why we uh, have on the wall, in all modesty, myself, and then uh, watercolor I made, and then uh, oil painting by yourself. Mm. And uh, so just to sort of preface this thing, because what is, what's struck me so much reading about, you know, reading your first article that you co-wrote with the four other students mm. there, and of course we'll get to that, yep. um, is that what is happening now is far beyond what I'm used to when it comes to, you know, of course, as classical figurative painters, you're not exactly helped within the art world, right? No. To be, be diplomatic about it. But now this is far beyond. I mean, you can be very well placed within, you know, in terms of what you make, within yep. the current situation, mm -hmm. and you get your head cut off in a split second. Yeah. Um, so, I don't know how, <laughs> you want to take it from there? <laughs> No, I think uh, that's an interesting observation because, um, of course, usually before you, you, that uh, chasm or, or um, um, you know, that tear between the, the abstract modernist kind of uh, paradigm, I guess you could call it, uh, mm. contrasted with uh, uh, what you're talking about, the classical figurative, that, uh, of course, that's... Um, that's kind of a, an old thing, at least uh, throughout my education, that we usually don't necessarily talk as much about the classical figurative side of things. And I also noticed that it's very, uh, very easy or, I guess, socially accepted in the sense to kind of bag or lash out at, uh, at that kind of... Uh, uh, I'm not going to call it a movement as such, but... Um, I guess classical figuration, you mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you, you told me you actually um, talked about Odd Nerdrum, wasn't it, at, the, at your school? Yeah, or, or like I, I, I experienced that uh, Odd Nerdrum, for, for example, is, a, is a, a, a person, a character that's easy to kind of uh, uh, make fun of and not take seriously. And I think uh, for me, I always had held a deep respect for his work. And, uh, and when I went to like a really bananas art school, like a pre-art school, I uh, happened upon one of his books and I really uh, was captivated by his work. So when, when I got to the um, uh, Art Academy or uh, like the National Academy of the Arts, uh, I thought that was a, a, a kind of a strange situation where, where we make fun of, of, of certain things just because they perhaps look different or uh, are concerned <laughs> with different thematics, you know? To me, that dis didn't really uh, resonate well. So, so I, I, I've kind of defended that kind of paradigm as well because I think that the, the craft, obviously, and, and another uh, series of motifs, another series of techniques should, of course, be, uh, be accepted, especially when we talk so much about diversity. You know, <laughs> that's, uh, so that's kind of the first ironic point here. Oh, that, spoiler uh, alert, <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> there's no <laughs> diversity. <laughs> Yeah, mm. yeah. I mean, it's it's um, <coughs> it's, uh, and I think this is also something that that you m uh, mentioned uh, to me earlier. Mm. How you have this strange sensation. You're you know watching these videos that are you know YouTubers mm. commenting on what is going on. You have Tim yeah. Pool. You have uh, you know Dave Rubin, whomever, mm. uh, talking about these things, and you think, oh, this is some kind of almost like a Nietzschean uh, way, you just look at it as an aesthetical phenomenon yep. going on in America. Yep. 
and then boom, it touches the ground yeah. running, and it's 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 everything is fully operational. Yeah, I mean that's is is this how like how did you experience it? Because it was it I mean first of all your article, the mm. thing that really became you know a, a, yeah. a, a, a discussion that was mm. written in or that was published when second uh, of August I think uh, last yeah. year yeah mm. so 20, uh, 20, uh, 20. yeah twenty twenty mm. yeah. Um, but was it was that sort of the starting point, or what was your experience before that? Uh, no, like um, uh, this sort of debate. I think it started in in uh, early June, maybe about uh, the whole uh, kind of letter regarding uh, the the artwork that is uh, an artwork that is hanging at school by made by uh, Vanessa Beecroft, uh, mm. which is a uh, photography. Uh, and a lot of the PhD students, actually, which uh, kind of surprised me, um, uh, wanted to problematize this work. Uh, and, and of course, the, the accusations, or uh, like both explicit and impl implicit accusations in this letter, uh, regards the, the work, uh, I guess, as uh, sexist, racist, or, or other kind of problematic things Surprise. that are still hypothetical in a, Surprise. In, yeah, <laughs> in a way. And, uh, and of course, we've heard this before. And as you say, uh, the whole thing about uh, me in, uh, being introduced to this uh, phenomena, like in general, that happened way, way, way earlier when I, I think like in, in 2015 or something, I was kind of, I guess, like you looking at uh, out of, uh, on YouTube and seeing these kind of bizarre examples of really kind of uh, radical activism on different university and college campuses, uh, especially in the United States, uh, where it was uh, everything from like these, uh, these uh, slogans that we hear all the time that we can talk about later, and, and also, but also w violent or people barricading doors and rooms and shouting things and chasing uh, teachers with bats. And, and that sounds kind of crazy, but all these things happened. So, um, and I've been following that for several years, and of course, you, you start by, by thinking, okay, this is uncanny, and it kind of makes you laugh, so it, it becomes yeah. like this kind of entertainment to watch, because, okay, this is too stupid, this is some sort of absurd theater. That, that, that's the kind of reaction you have. But, of course, when, when the, the ball is in your court, uh, so to speak, uh, things uh, get a bit different. And, and so I've been thinking about this for a lo uh, long time. So how or when or if uh, this is coming to Norway, for instance, or, or to my school, how is it going to look? So when this... So you're sort of mentally preparing for it. Yeah, uh, in, yeah. In, a, in a way. I, I, I thought like it's just a, a matter of time before a sort of this, uh, perhaps a milder uh, variety uh, comes here because it, it, it just in, in our cur current climate, it, it seems kind of inevitable because you see this everywhere and the same logic, the same uh, rhetoric and the same kind of language based tools that are employed. But of course, we can go more in depth about that. So when this letter about uh, Vanessa Beecroft's work being uh, racist, sexist and otherwise problematic in many regards, I thought, well, this uh, this is kind of the first taste, I guess, of this, because now we want to mobilize against uh, something that's been here for several years and haven't really been problematic um, in like any major uh, way. And just after that letter, uh, another letter by a different group of students uh, came up and, and I think um, these were like six students that were writing on behalf of, uh, I think, 100 or 130 students. Uh, and this was even more kind of explicitly uh, social justice oriented, because here you, we, we, they used um, everything that went on in, uh, in the United States at that time, especially regarding the protests around Black Lives Matter and George Floyd and, and all those incidents. Uh, these were kind of... Uh, direct causes for why we should make adjustments here in our institution. But this is, this is where the, the, the letter where they basically were accusing uh, yes. the, the art uh, and the craft school, mm. Koyo, for not yes. engaging in yeah. that discussion. Yeah. Because yeah. that should be a, a major task for an art institution. Yeah, for some reason they uh, thought that. Mm. And, and I thought, uh, well, and this is bizarre. And especially when, because, because in this letter, uh, not only are they kind of trying to, 
uh, make it some sort of diagnosis of our current climate, but they're also uh, making some very, uh, I think, problematic assumptions about uh, all the students at school and all the teachers and all the uh, people that are employed at this school because they're saying that everything is permeated by uh, what's called structural racism. Mm -hmm, yeah. and, and of course, this makes everyone complicit in some way. So they, they want to kind of force this idea that everyone is perpetuating something or enabling a system or, or partaking or enjoying the fruits of, uh, of the labor from some tree that has some bad roots, you know. So, so there's this kind of uh, feeling of uh, suspicion and that people aren't doing enough and that people should feel bad somehow, even if there aren't any... And I, my, my first kind of... Um, instinct then is to ask, well, where is the problem? Like, if, if we can document the problem and, and kind of have any concrete things to, to go from, we can actually implement things if it's necessary. And of course, in Norway as well, we have, um, as far as I know, a structurally anti-racist laws. Uh, like Grunloven and uh, <laughs> <laughs> structurally anti-racist. Oh, that's a problem for them. <laughs> so, so, so I mean, and we have this uh, paragraph about the racism and discrimination, and we have we have a kind of a, a, a very good apparatus around. Uh, also, at our school, we we have a lot more uh, ways of, uh, I guess, whistleblowing or reporting troublesome or problematic issues. But like already in place. Yeah, 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 they're already in place. Yeah. So if you experience uh, sort of discrimination, any sort of discrimination at our school, there, there are uh, channels there in, yeah. in place to guarantee that you can be anonymous and you can be safely, you right. know. But if you want to, you shortly can give the essential bullet points of what they mm. were writing in that letter because I do believe that th that letter signed by yeah. 130 people was the sort of the major one I mean you had the first one yeah which sort of started it but yeah. the second one was like when it really yeah. blew up yeah right? the first one was sort so of so what are they saying what what are the specific problems and what are the measures that they wanted to the school to, to uh, introduce yeah because what are the specific problems that's my problem because they they can't really list any problems and and almost a year afterwards they still haven't brought anything to the table but uh, as far as uh, these, but their uh, assertions are that yeah they just assert things and mm. and and then just expect everyone to to follow along with that mm. without raising any questions which is weird uh, uh, but yeah what their demands are um, there were uh, some I think. Uh, the one that especially uh, like struck out to me was that um, they wanted everyone to be uh, sent or enrolled in or in some way have mandatory courses and, and training in uh, anti-racism oh my God. Uh, in an art institution, uh, publicly financed. Um, and of course, this implies that everyone, in a way, needs this training. That isn't, uh, for me, necessarily true. Like, I have, uh, have had and have teachers uh, from several different uh, places in the world. Ethnicities, cultures, uh, beliefs, sexualities, you know, uh, everything in between. And I've had students from, from the kind of, uh, a huge variety, a spectrum of different. Uh, so so in, in my like practical life at school, this, is, this came as sort of a shock to, yeah. to expect that everyone around you is suddenly overnight has become some sort of racist, uh, enabling these exploitative structures. Uh, that's, a, uh, that's a bit much to, to kind of uh, just accept without... Mm. Uh, yeah, covering some ground and like yeah, and I mean yeah. you know you hear these stories of people who are forced to go this uh, through these mm. struggle sessions because that's basically what they are, mm. where they have to admit that they yeah. are racist, racist, yeah. and then of course yeah. if they have light skin, that's yeah. closest the case, right? Yeah. So this is the this is the kind of core value I think in in Robin D'Angelo's work, for instance, white mm. fragility. Because mm -hmm. even if you reject your own racism, that just uh, that's an admission of your kind of uh, unwillingness to accept change. So so that's your fragility speaking right. somehow. So so you can't say no, 
uh, there's just different ways of saying yes in a way to something that doesn't benefit you and, and make you appear evil. Well, isn't it that they use basically your skin color against you because that proves that you cannot argue yeah. or say no in any yeah. way? And things like that, that, that for me sounds really disingenuous and, and that's what my case with the letter as you're well. Be, you're being very diplomatic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, be, I'm, being, I'm, tr I'm trying to be really diplomatic even though people called me totalitarian for just responding to the letter because yeah. well, when this... Uh, yeah, yeah that, that was... Yeah, go on, go on. because uh, when these letters uh, first came, uh, I, I, I just... Uh, because in, in the letter, before these demands um, about the anti-racist training and, and, and all sorts of things, uh, mandatory BIPOC representation and certain courses and certain actions and mentoring and some of those cl uh, claims I, or demands, I, I, I guess, could be like more mentoring, easier to get the external mentors and stuff. I think that could be... Uh, nice like we could hire you for instance to have a course in uh, for those interested in that and other people mm. could hire other people so so some of those are are very uh, i guess uh, easy and and, and 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 cool to go along with but but these like almost metaphysical claims about your inner being mm. and that you somehow are complicit that's hard for me so i then wrote uh, because this letter was sent out uh, in our school email to everyone, like every student, every teacher, and uh, uh, like um, every agent at school. Uh, and in the letter it said, uh, uh, let's, uh, let's see, uh, something about silence is compliance mm -hmm. in, in a way. So, uh, and, and of course you can read that in two ways. I think you, you can read it as silence is compliance to this implied racism. Like mm -hmm. in a way, if you're silent and not speaking up, you are perpetuating the system. That's one, that's one way. And the other way uh, you could read this as well is silence is compliance. So if you don't say anything, we decide, you know? Yeah. So, so I kind of felt that yeah, like, yeah, yeah, okay, like, okay you, you're basically asking for someone to speak up here and no one is going to do it because I know that people are uh, afraid and that turned out I was right about that. So I, I, I thought like, and uh, there's, uh, there's a lot of young people at school and, and at least uh, I'm old enough to ruin my career, so to speak. Mm. So, so I, I <laughs> even though I don't have any, but, but you know, I, I'd rather take that blow than some 20 year old who has just graduated uh, high school, you know, uh, and uh, I have a background in philosophy. So, right. I was going to ask you yeah, about, about because that. I know some of these theories. I, mm. I've studied it. I, I've been, I've been very, very interested in, in French contemporary philosophy, deconstruction, uh, Foucault, all, all these all these people, yeah, I, I, and, and I, you and I share a, a love for uh, James Lindsay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's that's true. Mm. So, uh, so well, I, I I decided to speak out, and and what happened then was that I wrote the mail and I, I said like, yeah, so, so mm. just pause one second. Yeah, uh, because that letter that that signed by those 130 that was mm. an internal email it, because it wasn't an article in a newspaper at. No, I think time. it was published, uh, it came out uh, pretty soon because uh, the, both the case about the Beecroft art yeah. piece had been in the media already and, and I think uh, Subjekt published the full letter tra translated mm. into Norwegian English. So, yeah. so, so it became publicly available, but at the start it was just an internal discussion at school. An internal email that was sent. Yeah. But I think it's important to, to uh, just get mm. clear the context and the cost of replying to that email because yeah. it was sent out like 700 plus people mm -hmm. in total right yeah and i think that's um yeah it's part of the picture yeah yeah that's part of the picture so so i replied to that email and i just said that uh, i um, if if uh, silence is consent or compliance i just have to speak because i i i, I just don't agree with this and i think it's problematic because um in, in my in my view, this is uh, this might set a precedence for both for like the, the the freedom of artistic exploration, the role of the artist, and 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 also our uh, ability to speak and think freely in an institution that has uh, free thought and speech as its highest virtue. So you kind of desecrate the most important virtue of the uh, like you you're kind of destroying the roof of mm. your own home mm. in a way 
It's like uh, it's the uh, it's the it's the mental equivalent of drinking salt water to stay hydrated, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so so I kind of replied this that this isn't thought through thoroughly enough, uh, and we, and we need to have a real discussion about any concrete cases that we actually can solve instead of uh, kind of. Um, yeah, subscribing to this ghostly kind <laughs> yes, of... That's that a good of phrase, subscribing. Yeah. Because I, now, the, the image that, that comes up in my head is that, you know, you have these people living in far out in the countryside in, uh, well, let's say in Norway, yeah. listening to gangster rap, thinking that they're living in the hoods, you know? <laughs> it's, it's, it, you just import a whole ideology that goes, uh, this whole idea of structural racism, which is patently absurd in mm. Norway. To in just in to import that, mm. but then it just is up and going as it's as it's introduced. Yeah, but so you, you reply to that email. Mm. Yeah, I replied to that email, and and as is, as uh, I was expecting, I got some I got some replies to that. I got some um, not so happy, like uh, a bit unfriendly replies to that as well. Like, um, of course, when 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 you talk with people like this or with this kind of uh, the ideas of this ideology, I should say. Uh, the first problem is that any kind of um, conversation becomes really, really hard because uh, you are just moving the goalposts. So when I'm when I'm writing like this is not very tolerant. Just accusing everyone of being racist is not a sign of tolerance. Mm. That that's not inclusive. That's mm. that's excluding people in the name of inclusivity mm. by labeling them things they they aren't, uh, and just uh, assuming that that's true. So that's uh, that's not uh, fair. I think uh, I think it's just it's morally uh, reprehensible and it's not fair. Uh, but of course, people start to move the goalposts. You know, so they're saying, "Oh well, why are you against uh, diversity? Why are you against tolerance and inclusivity? We just want more experiences." Uh, they always say this. You know, mm. now why are you so afraid of just being challenged by having more perspectives and more? experiences but um uh, so so we went a bit back and forth and i and, and i i kind of uh, wanted to again where's the data where's the concrete evidence uh, how can we actually do anything i'd be happy to help if there's anything to help with um, and then of course we get sent this or, or i get sent these long articles you know that's supposed to explain to me why what this is because when you argue with these people they always say oh yeah you just need to read more oh it's not in, i don't want to spend the labor to to educate you about mm. things you should already know so they kind of imply that you're stupid and they want to make you feel morally kind of shameful oh. And uh, they weren't uh, responding to your actual arguments no, they never. weren't um, that's uh, strange on because you you how is that uh, sentence they always use that you have to you have to engage it's not mm. the concept they use you have to engage which, which means to just bow and yep. and uh, and you know, yeah yeah it follow. means yeah uh, engage uh, but it means submit you know exactly exactly but they were they will not engage with you no no they wouldn't uh, they would just uh, send me more and more long articles full of buzzwords uh, to show me that i was wrong uh, and they said that i should just read them and listen and believe and all these kind of uh, cliches uh, so i actually took their word so I, I read this really really long article uh, filled with buzzwords and and what i thought to be logical inconsistencies and like poor thinking so i think in, in that case when your thinking is poor, you're just uh, and using some sort of language-based system to emotionally manipulate uh, manipulate people to give consent or yeah. assent to your uh, to your um, insinuations. So, so, but, but, but what I did is I, I just took the entire text, sentence by sentence, and just wrote out all the inconsistencies, all the tricks, all the rhetorical devices, everything, and I sent this like long really to show that I was listening and I was reading and I was thinking with them. Mm. But of course, uh, the only reply I get to that, yeah, well, instead of uh, writing a tome or a book, I just, uh, and I, they link another article, oh. you know. So they were not, they were failing to engage, yeah. I think is the term. And as, as time progressed and I, I, I didn't um, kind of give up, I tried to uh, keep the, the pressure and, and like really, but we need, we need some real arguments here. Uh, at some point, I 
I just used their own rhetoric against them. Like I had written uh, another long, long post and it became quiet and I didn't get any arguments in, in return. So I, I just said like, well, yeah, if uh, silence is consent, I guess I was right. <laughs> Uh, and then, of course, the, <laughs> then they had then, uh, <laughs> it came out from the woodworks and I get these, like, you know, several pages long email uh, with, like, all these negative characteristics basically imply I'm a, I'm a racist and a fascist and, you know, the whole works. Uh, and uh, with, the, oh, don't you have anything better to do? I see you write these emails at night. Uh, and, uh, look, look, every grasping at every straw to just make me mm. look like a bad person. Mm. You know? And that, that's, that's very uh, usual when you en engage with people like this as well. Like they, they have to do anything in their power to make you look bad as a human being, like in the moral dimension. And that, that's, that's a very important point, I think, because uh, the, the, the kernel of this strategy is in a way to, to make the um, um, judicial system uh, kind of uh, obsolete because you, you are just referring to moral law instead. Right. Like we have all these uh, anti-discrimination things in places, but they don't care about it. They just want any like, chance to, to morally judge people. So they don't need all these other structures and administrations and, and all this kind of... They just need the... Ironically enough, they need a he hegemonic power to, to just <laughs> circulate between themselves and then they can decide who is in and out. And I was always out. I was, I was out here. I was a, an obvious dissenter and then I was like called totalitarian, you know, yeah. one but person that, that's, against... That, that's a striking uh, phrasing that they want to put the whole judicial system aside mm. and they have their own court. Yeah. Which is the, the yeah. moral uh, yeah. moral court? Yeah, and and, and I should uh, say it's not necessarily that I think it's their kind of explicit goal, but it's the result in practice. That, well, is, that yeah, is, yeah, that's what they're actually mm. are doing. Right? Yeah. Uh, mm. but, but but were there anyone that that uh, supported you somehow there? Or? Uh, well, yeah. So uh, so after a while, um, one of the other students that uh, wrote the article with us, uh, Webern Pedersen, he also uh, spoke out. And of course, uh, what's interesting here is, is that um, uh, this, uh, this kind of letter, it was uh, to represent uh, BIPOC people, which uh, stands for Black, Indigenous and People of Color. And of course, both me and Webern, we, I guess, technically, we are BIPOC because we are both Indigenous. We have Indigenous relatives, you know, uh, of the Sapmi. Yeah. Uh, so that was interesting to me as well when they're saying, oh, well, we should, uh, we should stop uh, speaking over uh, BIPOC people and listen to BIPOC voices. And, and then I write in my <laughs> mail, but so, so is this the structural racism you're talking about that you're just, you're just not going to listen to me because I'm Sapme, you know? Just, you said that? Yeah, or I said it ju that? Just, for, just for fun, yeah, you know, to, 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 to show that this hypocrisy is so <laughs> enormous that you, um, that you can't... Uh, kind of can't see your own wrongdoings okay. in your urge to do right. But again, did, did they then reply specifically to that or was it just... Yeah, because then the problem is that if I, as a BIPOC person, for instance, um, and that BIPOC status is not very important to me personally, but, no, but it's, like it's... Technically, of a, yeah. in, the, in the woke language, yeah. you are, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's <laughs> <I> from... Mean, <laughs> <laughs> well, you told me you, have a, you took a gene test. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, both uh, Sakme and Eskimo DNA in this body. So, but but that didn't help, of course, and that's very. Did you telling. sell in your card? <laughs> no, but uh, so so that's uh, that. What I think is in, uh, interesting because it's implied here that oh well, but you're not BIPOC enough, are you? Yeah, yeah. And, well, and if, that's, if you vote for Trump, you ain't black. <laughs> yeah, 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 kind of the <laughs> same, <laughs> kind of the same thing, you know. So, so that was interesting to me. Uh, okay, so Baben mm -hmm. Pearson. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 and he and he wrote that that I'm 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 BIPOC and and uh, my sexuality and this and that. I have several of these you know claims to this kind of uh, status inside mm -hmm. the the woke hierarchy. Yet mm -hmm. I still disagree with you. Right. Uh, well, you, you, uh, <laughs> It's so absurd. We have to mm. now talk about mm. your gene test and you mentioned sexuality there. So, Edmund Pedersen is a homosexual or...? Uh, 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 well, what he said in, uh, in the mail was he was uh, bisexual. So, he uh, both right. had like this uh, ethnic uh, with the Satmi and with the sexuality with the, the kind of... So, right, and yeah. but how did that go down? Was that... No, so people didn't <laughs> care, you know. 
uh, because he has the wrong opinions. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that's, that's very telling for me because even though you are one of the people they claim to represent and protect, hmm. if you have the wrong opinions or think the wrong thoughts or dare to criticize, they'll show, uh, throw yeah. you under the bus, you know. Yeah. Mm. What, what, what's that uh, concept? I mean, on newdiscourses.com, uh, Lindsay's uh, webpage, she has this woke dictionary. Mm. And there's something about, well, you have internalized yeah. whiteness yeah. or you have, uh, like, what are the concepts used for people who don't know what they should? Yeah, yeah, that, <coughs> that, that, very good that you say that yeah. because, uh, of course, in the cases with uh, me and the Eburn, for instance, and, and every other people that's a, a dissident, I guess, uh, inside the system, uh, that, that if, if, for instance, I'm, I'm Sapme, and, but I, I don't uh, condone what they are doing, they'll just call uh, that internalized racism on my yeah. part. So I'm too yeah. stupid to know that I'm racist against myself because right. I've internalized the structures that oppress me. Sounds like how racists would play, behave to black people or, you know. Yeah, you know, so uh, whenever you start to think about these things, there's a lot of like, uh, at least for me, glaring contradictions and, mm. and hypocrisy here that needs to be addressed. So that was my... Um, uh, but didn't yeah. also uh, Weber and Pedersen uh, come up with some numbers when it comes to representation of so-called BIPOC students? Yeah, I think so. I can't remember exactly, but I think he... Um, I think the gist, was, gist was, was that, well, there's over-representation of... <laughs> yeah, we've been a, a bit unsure about that claim, uh, but, uh, yeah. but uh, technically speaking, it's right, because Kiyo has a larger um, student base from, from other countries, you know, from... Uh, uh, than uh, other like uh, schools or, or, or yeah. places in our society. Yeah. So, so just from like a statistical point of view, uh, Kyo is actually quite diverse mm. in many like different cultures and and all that. Uh, and he and also of course uh, I think women are overrepresented overrepresented by both the students and the teachers. And we have a, a, a lot of these uh, different things that Webern was pointing out. Uh, uh, and and he was uh, linking, you know, to mm. all this, uh, this databases where you could see and kind of. Yeah. And this is still the, the yeah, internal, in internal uh, email uh, debate. Yeah, still. Or, yeah. And of course, no one is able to answer uh, Webern uh, in any particularly good way there as well. So, uh, so then it basically boils down to me and Webern trying to uh, yeah, ask for any concrete evidence and arguments or explanations even like how can you just suddenly call everyone a racist like this doesn't seem uh, right and it, mm. it seems very weird and it seems a bit um, I don't know a good uh, English word for it but uh, well, opportunistic yeah. I, I think and tyrannical and not yeah malicious. yeah of course yeah of course I, I, I thought so uh, so yeah, then the, the I think we I think I wrote back and for, forth for a month, uh, and then we kind of uh, understood that okay, this is going nowhere. Yeah. Uh, this is going nowhere. It's completely impossible to get uh, anyone to to kind of uh, to be clear about what what's really going on there. So we. Um, decided to write this uh, article. But uh, before that, I should say that while me and Webern were uh, writing, we, uh, at least I, and I think Webern as well, got a lot of mails from people at school and, and uh, also from PhD students and, and teachers that, that um, uh, told us that, uh, well, thanks, uh, huge thanks for like kind of sticking your head out and, and being preparing to get chopped off, you know? I, I would never dare to do it myself. I can't risk my social life and my career. That was kind of the, uh, happened yeah. several times, yeah. you know. So you, you start to get this uh, feeling like uh, you you feel like you you should say something as well. Like people are counting on you to say something. But after a while, it gets kind of this like, okay, but where where are you? S someone else needs to kind of if shoulder this. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know because. Everyone's thinking it, but no one is daring to, to say and it. And that's you know? the fascinating yeah. thing that you have. I mean, Lindsay is mentioning how like you have schools where they want to introduce critical race theory and have the children um, confess that they're racist and all these things. Mm. And he's saying it's 12 people yep. getting it through. It's not 1,200 nope. or 120, it's 12. Yep. And all of the rest of them are just keeping their mouths mouth shut. Mm. Yeah, so it's... Um 
But did, did you uh, encourage them to speak out, like, you know, replying to these people? Yeah, I, I tried to to kind of be uh, diplomatic and, and, and say, like, yeah, and I'll support you and if you need anything or perhaps you could write something together or, like, talk to people or, or anything just to kind of have an, uh, yeah, an alternate way of... Uh, of uh, not necessarily needing to participate in the, that thread, uh, uh, like the email chain, because it was kind of, I understand why people just suddenly won't come in there and agree with me when they see kind of the temperament that mm. arises from yeah. dissent. But, uh, but you know, so, so that was kind of... Um, but then there were th three other students then that uh, mm. joined you and you wrote that article together. And this was, <clears throat> because this is when it becomes public yeah. F yeah, at least for you, your, your mm. part. Yeah. And so what was the, what did you write in that article and what, what happened in the aftermath of that? Uh, yeah, so what's funny is that uh, the, the um, initial article that we wrote in uh, Modern Blood, that it, uh, it a, was... A national newspaper. Yeah, yeah. national newspaper. Uh, was a, a pretty long uh, opinion piece. Uh, but it was, uh, in a way, it was basically just the original... Uh, letter from the students with some additional commentary. Yeah. So in a way, most of the article are just blatant kind of uh, copying and pasting in uh, a lot of the claims. But of course, when when you when you read it with some some commentary and, and with some spacing and in another context, it's easy easier to see that a lot of those original arguments were were kind of bizarre, you know. And especially, uh, you know, with the anti, anti uh, compulsory anti-racist training camps. Yeah, I mean, uh, God, I mean, what the, the thing that really st uh, struck me was when they were talking about how was it to, uh, what would be the English phrasing, to map yeah. racism or map mm. prejudices. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I don't know, did, did they talk about like some some uh, archive or, that was like implicit in yeah. it. Yeah. And I mean, if you were going to map out and surveil, uh, put in a surveillance system in some form, mm. then this is a complete totalitarian mm. attitude. Yeah. And at the same time, they're talking about diversity. Like like, and th then we're back to you know, if you're painting like this or this. Mm. You get your head chopped off yeah. if, you, if you don't agree, you know, with mm. the, if you don't bow yeah. and agree, right? And that's, that's, a, that's a very good point because uh, I think that's uh, important to kind of uh, drill into people's heads that this isn't about art as such or, or, or kitsch painting or classical or abstract or modernism or any kind of genre. Uh, it's not about uh, politics in the classical sense, which uh, to me is very, very interesting because a lot, lot of these ideas and these tendencies are coming from the left, but mm -hmm. they have no uh, traditional leftist the, you know, the class-based issues, for instance, that is being uh, removed and replaced with race-based and sex-based characteristics instead. So you kind of, you kind of transform this uh, thing that should be universal solidarity between kind of the proletariat, for instance, the, the working class. You make that into this kind of biological determinism that uh, I don't, see how this could be more uh, progressive or more inclusive in any way mm. but uh, but even there on the on the reddest of the red you still get your head chopped off you know so so this is something else is something it, yeah. it flows between in a way yeah i mean it, it, what i see is that it's it's um you know when you think about the, the whole the concept of fine art which uh, you, when that comes in, you get that separation between art and craft. Mm. So that lies from the very beginning, right? Yeah. That's, that's just two value systems, different value mm. systems. And so the art, fine art idea is, is uh, very simply put, this more sort of spiritual uh, idea, right? Mm. And what is going now is, I can only perceive it as art 2.0. It goes completely into high gear and it's all moral purity, pure mm. spirit. Yeah. And if you, your spirit is not pure, you can be the most accepted guy or woman or trans or whatever, mm. and there's yep. no mercy at all. Yeah. 
Yeah, so yeah, I guess the art uh, 2.0 is a good way of describing this as well because this is some sort of politics or activism 2.0 that, yeah. that but, but it, it, I mean the, the, my point was that that with the, the art way of thinking it's mm. not really uh, what you make that is important, you know, it's mm. the concept behind, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. But in with this idea, it's not even that. Mm. You know, it's like, like who cares if you have an idea behind making yeah. something? That that's not what we're talking about here. Mm. Yeah, but okay. So back to mm. your, your, yeah, your and, article. And, uh, yeah, so so we wrote this opinion piece, and we uh, used a lot of brackets from the original text, and just mm. with some additional commentary, why we felt that this was a threat to to academic, like uh, yeah, to freedom of uh, thought and and like the free exploration of artistic expressions, and that that art and and our schools should be subjugated to these kind of uh, fringe ideas from mm. a very selective part of the history of philosophy, you know. Uh, and, and of course to, to demand people follow a certain political doctrine, for instance, and that's not diverse. And of course the art school should have people of all different political uh, orientations and all different people really, everyone interested in actually learning to do art or craft or, or you know, if you want to study political science or gender, uh, I don't know, gender studies, for instance, or, or deconstruction and critical theory, you can actually do that at the Blinder, like I actually done. At the university, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, and, but of course, when <laughs> I talk to these people who, who, who give me these references that I've already read, is that they tell me to educate myself, and they haven't read it themselves, and they don't understand the arguments. So, oh, that, so that's the typical seal it uh, attitude, right? Yeah. yeah. So, so even here, you kind of just use uh, philosophy as some sort of proxy to get what mm. you want. Mm. I, I kind of always visualize this kind of three-year-old crying in the store because he didn't get ice cream. You know, it's it's a bit like this. And when when people aren't immediately comforting you, you just uh, scream even more. You know until you write a letter and demanding that everyone else gets sent to training camp because <laughs> they, you don't like them, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is not a very diplomatic way of saying it, but, but you know, that's basically what happens. People just mm. want to, to push their will through and want others to, to, to submit to that without mm. any questions. And I think that's uh, to have that, that as your kind of perspective on how dialogue and, and, and political operations should uh, be done. Well, that's... That's crazy. And that's kind of what we're trying to achieve in, in that paper to, to just, okay, this internal dialogue, that doesn't work. So we just, we have to give it to the public so they can decide in mm. a way. Like and that's people, why you were quoting it at length so that people wouldn't yeah, think you were yeah, just making this up. Yeah, because, because that was, uh, was our, uh, our main idea here that we shouldn't necessarily uh, need to, to argue down everything because these people don't care anyway. Like, uh, yeah. uh, but so what we did instead is to expose the kind of inherent madness in this way of thinking to the general public, uh, also the people who pay for this stuff in yeah. the first place, you know, right, because right. it's a public institution. And that's also why they deserve to know what's going on. Uh, and uh, we did it to, to, be, uh, to actually make the, the whole thing, phenomenon being taken seriously. And, and, and I thought like, so this is kind of the start of of wokeness like campus radicalism here in Norway so it's it's I think it's smart to to put it on the map immediately and, and kind yeah. of just sound oh, yeah. the sound the alarm before everything is uh, yeah lying around with a broken back you know yeah, because that that's an interesting thing that that uh, you can have a situation where one person says something and that somehow becomes a shock mm. to the rest mm. and like you say there are people who are thinking that this is not right, but I'll keep my mouth shut and just go along with it. Mm. Maybe they won't see me. Mm. But it still speaks to them. Yeah. The, 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 I mean, it's like that's the only thing you can do to, mm. to let people know that what is going on here. Yeah. So, no, uh, that's, uh, so after that article, uh, the, the real kind of uh, <laughs> circus uh, started in a way because... Mm. Um, we knew that we would get reactions because, of course, as I said, and, and you two have been following this for several years. So, so you kind of already know what's in store for dissenters or people yeah, who don't yeah, agree. I mean, I mean, speaking of it, so unoriginal. Un un yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's like, yeah, it is. Come it is. on, have some <laughs> fantasy, guys. <laughs> yeah, that's true. No, okay, but, uh, so, so what? what yeah, happens? so, so it. Um, 
Uh, it starts with, uh, well, actually it started before that, if I should take it back to the start, because when I was uh, starting to write these internal letters, people already then, instead of uh, answering me with arguments, they start to go after me on social media, trying to get my art removed. Uh, from the internet, trying to get my... Uh, like how would they do that? Just you know, No, they really go in on uh, Instagram and mass reporting my, uh, my uh, art pieces so that if it gets reported many times enough, the algorithm will just uh, take it oh. away. And because of Corona, I couldn't apply for a sort of revision there. So it would just automatically kind of... Flat so they, they succeeded. At yeah, that. they succeeded in removing some of the uh, some of the pieces. So I had to make my profile pri private and lock everything down. And then I see that they tried to gain access to my account by repeatedly spamming me with the school's official accounts, like for different exhibitions and the school's official profile. Yeah. And then like uh, several times a day, they're like, "Oh, we want access. We want access." Or uh, this is a campaign. Yeah, yeah, and at the same time people would start to uh, register uh, uh, anonymous accounts with like no followers and no... Uh, uh, that was called I see you racist. And they would just uh, go and look me up on Instagram so I could see that they... I could see their names. So I could yeah. see like when I went into Instagram, I could see I see you racist, blah, blah, blah. I yeah. see you this, that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, and this popped up more and more frequently. And that happened with the Webjorn as well. So it is, I guess it's uh, logical to assume that this is uh, somehow connected because this happened every time Don't I sent a mail. Don't be a conspiracy mail. theorist yeah, now. I'm a conspiracy <laughs> theorist now. Yeah, so, so, so this happened every time I sent a mail, I, yeah. I get these repercussions. So after we wrote the article, this uh, kind of escalated into a whole new level where people started to uh, have these uh, kind of uh, campaigns on uh, like the national, uh, like the academy, for instance, had this Facebook chat where students are uh, talking shit and people that are uh, kind of like established artists and not uh, in our school. Uh, they are in that forum and, and like kind of um, uh, what you call it, amping people up to to hate oh. us even more. So they're kind of. Can you be specific about like what they would say or what they would would uh, advise people? To yeah, do? it was it was uh, of course it was all the standard that this is uh, extremism and that this is uh, far right conspiracy people that we are racist that we are fascist, but also that. Uh, I saw, even though, if you remember, I had my profile private, private but somehow they still um, had gotten into it. So I, I saw suddenly, I got screenshots from this chat, and I saw suddenly pictures of my artworks, and these people saying, oh, send it to the news, send it to the news. Like, so they were going to, uh, I think, attempt to brand me as a racist and send my art to the news, and they would argue that my art is racist or perpetuating, like, Mm -hmm. uh, and and this complicit, I think, is the term. yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. So, so I thought that was kind of okay. So these are the same artists that, like, one year previously arranged a huge demonstration for artistic freedom of, of expression. These are the same people that want to brand me in the news, uh, and they don't even want to talk to me personally. They just have made up their mind, and they want my art removed, and they want to yeah brand me. Uh, uh, whatever in, in but but how was this like in your sort of practical everyday life i mean you of course we're talking about uh, covid measurements and this, mm -hmm. these things uh, yeah um, um were you attending school or, or was the school open or uh, and were you attending it like did you meet, meet any uh, yeah I, uh, I mean were there people behaving misbehaving to you like physically or not really physically I, I, or like this kind of uh, I, I thought the, even though I knew there was going to be trouble I think uh, the situation was a bit harder than I uh, anticipated at first because the, when the, the, this pressure started first in social media and then I see like uh, people that are uh, established artists and everything they are smearing our reputation online like really uh, to all uh, galleries and you know all organizations even people that works in publicly financed organizations that are supposed to represent me are even saying publicly online that uh, you know I'm just uh, a person who wants to see the world burn and I have problems and you know all this kind of different uh, varieties of, of, of this so um, uh, but I didn't really have so much physical things so this is the thing with, with this uh, this uh, social justice tactic is that instead of engaging in, in a real dialogue, they just want you to feel 
embarrassed and ashamed. Yeah. They want to use this social kind of pressure mechanisms to make you feel like you're always uh, on on watch or you're always yeah, watched yeah. in a way. Like yeah. like a I see you racist. They're f they're following and uh, we know who you are really and we know what you are. You know. So uh, the first kind of taste of, of any uh, practical, like physical things was I was supposed to uh, have a talk at an institution called Kunstnernes Hus. Yeah, the art I, artist's house. Yeah, yeah. which I, I, I thought was interesting. And uh, I was asked by a previous teacher to, to talk about um, being an artist during um, lockdown and how I, because I do music and I do art and stuff and how this had been uh, under the lockdown period, and I, I, had, I had said yes to this um, long before this, this whole uh, context uh, uh, conflict happened. So, so I didn't really think uh, much about that. But uh, some days before I was supposed to hold that um, presentation, um, uh, shit hits the fan, and there's been some uh, uh, changes in the panel. So one of these woke activists. Uh, are now on the panel that I'm supposed to be. And of course, minutes after this is announced, I get a phone call and all hell is breaking loose with people sending the, the arranger or uh, like the, the responsible person for arranging this thing uh, gets a lot of like, you know, uh, messages. And I didn't, uh, I heard some of what that was written. Uh, I, I think actually I was in some way compared to rapist as well. Uh, and, and, you know, all, all these kinds of things that really, and of course that I'm racist yes, they, and fascist and... They want to scare people through this guilt by association idea. Yeah, so... I mean, so it's, it's like, uh, I don't know if you saw that, but I had the, the conversation with Marcus Anderson, the Swedish painter. Mm. And they did the same thing with him because, uh, uh, and that's a strange situation. It still gives some hope somehow, mm. this Romanian artist who actually stood up for freedom of speech by by uh, exhibiting Anderson's paintings in at the Museum of Modern mm. Art, mm. and that just led to uh, yeah. Uh, yeah another shitstorm. Yeah. And of course, that he was Nazi and all these things. So, mm. same thing happens when he then later wants to do something. He's like, oh, wasn't there something about him being? Mm. Right. So that's that's yeah. what they're. Yeah. It's a stain. That, it's that, uh, that, yeah, yeah. That's the shame and the the, mm. uh, the um, what do you call it? Uh, ostracizing of, yeah. of people. So, so I, uh, and I was feeling the pressure, so I was kind of asked like, uh, maybe if you, uh, if you don't participate this time, you should like be concerned about your own mental well-being and your safety and stuff. And maybe it's best That's... if we like do this another time. And, and at first I was kind of emotional. So I just, oh yeah, I can't take this. I can't take this. I'll just, uh, but after I cooled down for some hours, I just uh, rang back up and, or, or t sent a text message and said, well, it's not right that I should be pushed out of this. <laughs> And, and I, I, I can't really forgive myself if I, if I allow myself to be kind of cancelled or, or pushed out of something. Yeah. And I have kind of a voluntary kind of, I'm in on it. I, I, I can't really be in on it, even if that would be the easiest. So I said, I think I should perhaps do my presentation um, uh, instead, uh, instead of like uh, dropping out or doing it later. And, but then of course the, the whole kind of shitstorm uh, com uh, continued to unfold until uh, everyone agreed, or, or like the administration agreed that uh, with our principal at our, pri our principal at our school was supposed to uh, partake in the in the same panel, and this is a kind of a funny detail because they, uh, together with the principal and the um, uh, person responsible for the, uh, for the arrangement, they decided we can't. This has now become something that it shouldn't be, so we'll just postpone it and see if we can take it up later when things are, um, have calmed down. Uh, and, and after that, two weeks after that fact, uh, our principal is interviewed in either Klassekampen or Aftenposten, I think, two national newspapers, uh, where he concludes that our school has no problems with kind of uh, freedom of speech or like the... the possibility of speaking. In Norwegian, we, we, we dis, uh, distinguish between yttringsfrihet, like freedom of speech, as a technical judicial term, mm. and yttringsrom, as the more... Uh, the, the space the, in which you yeah, express yourself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. As, as a more like practic practical 
uh, aspect to kind of gauge if if, if the. Well, I guess that's where your self policing comes in. Then, yeah, really. yeah. How yeah. much space you can allow yeah. yourself? Because this space uh, might uh, might uh, re in a way block the the freedom of expression. If if everyone like at our school during the internal mail dialogue. We have uh, freedom of speech, technically speaking, of course, but when people are too afraid to speak, mm. in practice, there is something kind of dubious going on there with, with, with that space. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I'm starting to hate phrases like space and conversation. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So, so the thing gets cancelled, uh, mm. th that uh, lecture or lecture yeah. panel? So, so it gets kind of the, the official thing is it's mm. postponed, but I never heard anything more. So I, I think basically it was cancelled. Uh, and our principal is standing in the news and saying that our school has no problems with kind of this mm. uh, diversity of opinion and stuff, uh, which we obviously do. So I, I then became kind of infuriated actually because I, I had been talking to the dean and I've been talking to several people and, and trying to kind of, and my, my teachers and my personal tutor who were really helpful uh, to me and kind of and understood. I think that's important to emphasize yeah. that there were people like Yeah, there were people you, in, yeah. uh, uh, I mean, awakened forces in the institution as well yeah, that, yeah. that felt that this, this reminded them of the Cultural Revolution in the 60s, uh, for instance, and other kind of uh, radical things. And, and where certain political groupings try to claim definitional powers and they use language and they get this uh, influence. Uh, so I, when after the principal had said that we have no problems with this, uh, kind of uh, that was the straw for me that broke the camel's back. So I decided to write another opinion piece in Morgenblad to kind of follow up. Mm. Uh, because uh, in the first article, we warn about uh, what the impending kind of uh, catastrophe that's uh, about to happen. And then in the following uh, opinion piece, I kind of chronicle those effects kind of like I do here as well, talk about what actually happened and how mm. fast it happened and in what manner it happened. Uh, and it, it follows all the signs of the American campus radicalism. So, I mean, my argument there is it's is very, very hard to overlook that this is a, a, a pattern, you know? Yeah, yeah. This is a pattern that you can observe globally in different institutions and across uh, the political kind of landscape like we were talking about like it doesn't necessarily have to do with art or, or kitsch painting it doesn't necessarily have even to do with right or left it's kind of beyond all these things it's it's a it's a it's a certain tool of influence it's a strategy it's a tactic uh, that can be used as a weapon or a, tro a trojan horse like i felt this letter was at uh, kio mm. to to give um, power in a very undemocratic and unsolidar uh, unsolidaric, I don't know. Uh, what the, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like soldier. Uh, yeah, I guess an undiplomatic uh, way is a better uh, way to say uh, it. Uh, yeah. uh, but is this when, uh, I don't know if I'm cutting you off, but um, the second thing that, that, I mean, when I was investigating, uh, reading your article, which I mm -hmm. thought was very clear and very, it was absolutely not polemic in any way. But of course, you were stating that you disagreed with what was going on. I, I mean, one thing, one thing that really stood out to me is, is, I'm paraphrasing, we want knowledge, you know, given the money we're paying to go mm. to that school and not just indoctrination. Yeah. And I thought, well, you know, thumbs up for that <laughs> sentence. Um, but but um, one of the other um, articles I found going into it, Mm. was one where these, I guess, these same students, mm. and perhaps more, were reading this letter out loud. Yeah. That, because that, that freaked yeah. me out. Because that then, then it was like, you know, and, and I said that in the commentary video, you know, if this is open discussion, I'll have a closed discussion any mm. day. Because that's, well, you can, you can lay out that. Yeah, uh, yeah that's, that's interesting. Because uh, like uh, first internal uh, dialogue, which uh, started with the, all this online kind of harassment with removing the art and stuff. Yeah, that's, then di our, that's dialogue. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and then our first opinion piece and then all this uh, smear campaigning and everything going on. Then leading into, I guess, me being cancelled or at least this uh, arrangement not happening because mm -hmm. of uh, mm -hmm. tumultuous uh, activists. Uh, then uh, Webjorn Pedersen, one of the other co-writers, he he did uh, a satirical kind of Instagram page where he was making fun of what he thought to be like totalitarian tendencies 
uh, and he made like uh, memes about that and that was very very controversial and this was also more ammunition for people to call us you know far right and whatever um, so uh, he actually got uh, I mean cancelled as well so so one day uh, a student the same student that uh, wrote the insanely long email about all my negative characteristics he writes a mail to the entire department where where Webern is a student uh, graphics and drawing uh, the only person not receiving that mail is Webern himself and in that mail it's a long long mail that uh, characterizes Webern as a threat and a problem that need to they need to lay a collective plan to deal with him um, that's and freaky. I mean that's kind of then you're that's upping the game yeah that's upping the game and at wow. that point I think Webern was kind of um, getting a bit more kind of uh, touched by this whole thing as well because well, I I'd course. already been kind of oh shit I, I kind of I don't regret it but it's not kind of fun uh, Webern was a bit more uh, he held a bit longer but um, in that point as well I think we both felt that these people are really on another entirely different level yeah. than in, in how they interpret you know reality because we we still thought that there might be some possibility for dialogue but but when well it, this is yeah. this is going beyond beyond yeah. just mobbing oh you're not in the mm. group this is a different level yeah and this culminates of course with um, with uh, a meeting where we called into some sort of meeting or open forum they call it oh, where no, they were going open. to yeah it's not open <laughs> where they were going to revitalize this letter and but they were going to do it in an open way that uh, it was possible to come there and raise questions and everything can i just ask one yeah. thing revitalize was that the phrase no i i, I can't remember i can yeah because that, I, I hate re words <laughs> I, 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 it's just getting gets on my skin i'm sorry <laughs> I, I, I disturbed your no no thoughts. no that's fine so uh, so then me and Webern and uh, the other people who wrote uh, the letter we went there to see uh, what uh, this was uh, about because they had this uh, uh, this kind of uh, thing planned in 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 the middle of school like in the schoolyard. Uh, well, we did, we did post uh, that video yeah. on Culture Wars. Yeah, so people have a possibility yeah, yeah. to see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Webjorn took yeah. that. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And at that point, we both, I think, felt really like this is something else. You know, we couldn't really anticipate that. We, we could anticipate people being angry and smearing us and all that bullshit that happened, even the cancellations and everything. Yeah. But with that kind of, this was supposed to be an open meeting, but it was more like some sort of religious meeting or religious congregation or, or, or some sort of ritual because people were uh, going around in circles raising their fists and shouting like in a military manner and uh, with like this battle cries and everything and there were over over a hundred people there I think like in, in this huge circle so me and Webern and all the other people we go down there and Webern is filming of course and we're just looking and there's no really really no dialogue there they're just uh, going around and with this battle cries and then everyone start to read this uh, original letter again uh, together in in like this chorus in a way kind of just uh, it's the most uh, freaky thing I've yeah, ever yeah I don't know the chanting I guess would be the best word like the chanting this letter uh, together and 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 when they're done suddenly the the leaders i think or like the the people who are kind of leading this um intervention they get down on their knees and then suddenly everyone's starting to kneel so the only people that are still standing up is is me and and the rest of of uh, us that wrote this article yeah five people uh, and that didn't really feel very open either because you see and everyone's uh, wearing masks of course but you can just see a, a notion of stink eyes and people starting to take pictures of you because you're not kneeling with so them they're you know. proving your complicit uh, yeah complicit so it's 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 not yeah. as open as it is filtering out who's with us or who's Jeez. against us, I think. So uh, actually at that point when people started to kneel, I think all the rest of us, there were, were I guess, uh, two, three other students that were standing uh, uh, as well. Uh, but uh, I think all of us felt like this surge of adrenaline, like this is, of it, it just kind of leveled up to another, 
it became much more real, uh, physical in a way. Well, that's the, I mean, one thing is <coughs> that we are really concerned with the, the cable policy is this yeah. thing about uh, myths, right? Mm. And how I've, I've thought so much about it, how you know things with your body. Yes. Yeah, like the typical thing, you can have some kind of problem, traumatic experience. Mm. If you only read and talk about it, it doesn't help. You have to somehow conf confront yeah. it bodily, mm. right? So what they're doing is tapping into that physical need of a human being to do things with the body, mm. to say with the body, I am w uh, a part of yes. this. And of course, then if you're not participating, you're saying that you're not part of the, mm. the, the, this type of ritual. Yeah, and that's interesting when you, when you say it because um, I should probably not mention his name, but one of the students there, I know him, and he was in the middle of the crowd and he, he comes from a, a, a very like a strict religious background. And he was uh, suddenly he found himself kneeling there and and kind of when I talked to him afterwards, he said like, yeah, uh, that he really felt used in a way uh, or he was he was angry with himself because yeah. because he couldn't resist. He, yeah. he, he didn't he didn't dare to be the one person in the middle of everything that's just standing there. Yeah. And he felt like he was kind of put back into where his roots I with see. this kind of fundamental kind of sect where he was brought up. And, and, I, and I said, well, yeah, you're right, because I was looking at this and, and it kind of felt a bit like some sort of, I, I don't want to be like too dramatic here, but it was really no, absurd. No, but that's what to, actually to, happened. To yeah, that, yeah, to be frank, that was happened. And, and that's just the way it is. Uh, and, and I guess uh, to be kind of uh, honest here, I think for these people, this was probably a, like a very beautiful and, you know, emotional thing. But uh, for me, it just had a completely different flavor, to be honest. It, uh, it uh, was, uh, yeah, uh, enough to be cautious about, I think. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's like one step further into like the physical world with these rituals being engaged around this kind, this kind of theoretical lingo. And it, it gets very strong, you know, it's very, very... Um, easy to to fall into this and and well i mean this is this, some of the same strategy that that, that uh, marxists used in the uh, uh, marxist leninists used in the 70s right when they would in uh, what do you call it uh, well proletar pro, pro, proletarize themselves mm. you know it doesn't make sense in english but like it would be something similar to to learning to speak cockney english to show that you're yeah, from the work, yeah, yeah. working mm. class right and mm. that is a physical or uh, auditative at least sign that mm. you are part of what is acceptable right and then that's what they were doing with that mm. ritual there yeah. at uh, you know and that, you know people can see that video yeah. and that's one of the most terrifying things i've seen this that's a strange thing because you would think that these people are serious as like screaming and like full of vitality but they're like like it's like some externalization of a complete uh, incapacitated mind. Yeah, it's uh, just like uh, some script is running there, and uh, you know it's. Uh, I guess this is a bit cheap, but you know, in the meme world, you have this concept of the NPC, the non-playable character, like in video games. You, okay, you, um, yeah. Wait, 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 so wait, wait. Uh, let's say you're a protagonist in a video game and you talk to, you basically talk to the computer and the computer will just give you pre-programmed output. Oh, okay. it, it will give you output based on the script. <laughs> Yeah, and of yeah. course, when uh, just when related to like the when, whenever you he hear the concepts of like the diversity, tolerance and inclusion together, you always hear this kind of script. And if you start to look for the patterns, you see this same thing, yeah. uh, same thing everywhere that you just use words that sound nice to get yeah. your way. Yeah. Uh, and that's what they were doing in this kind of uh, thing as well. But. Uh, with the, the whole kind of chanting thing, it gave it a more robotic kind of lifeless. Uh, That's the freaky part. Yeah, I, I agree with that. That's the freaky that. part. Yeah. I mean, it's, um, I, I always come back to, uh, I, I think I mentioned it to you, um, uh, The Darkening Age by Catherine Nixie, mm. the, class, the, the Christian destru destruction of the classical world. And if you read that, I mean, well, we haven't uh, mentioned cynical theories by James Lindsay, but yeah, of course that's should, a yeah. given. Uh, a given, um, uh, I think that you should read it. Yeah. Um, but in that book, Nixie is is mapping out how the early Christians went from these, uh, the, 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 um, 
how Christianity took over went from this sort of woke activism mm. to which become became increasingly violent yes. and smashing sculptures and and uh, killing people uh, like Hypatia in, in mm. Alexandria, and then it becomes in the beginning just accepted, and then it turns gradually into state politics. And I think that's a major, well, we'll not get into cultural politics as such, but that's one question that I'm thinking about. This is the state giving, or we are forced to give money to something that has as its goal to completely have a, I mean, well, basically a cultural lockdown, like a lockdown mm. on, on freedom of speech. Yeah. Right? And of course, uh, you could be uh, either for or against, uh, you know, public, uh, like the public's relation to yeah. uh, taxing I mean, and culture. But but this is a very uh, good point that you're raising. Because why would you finance something that tries to destroy the roots that give them life in a way? Yeah. That's uh, that's very absurd. I mean, that's asking me. quite a lot. Quite yeah, a lot and, and that's that's the whole thing about this whole kind of ordeal that I, I still think is so weird. Uh, tracking everything that's happened uh, uh, back to that uh, Vanessa Beecroft initially that picture everything that's happened uh, from that point on on that hasn't benefited art or, or like uh, painting or, or being creative it has just uh, kind of uh, made people afraid and made it harder to to express oneself uh, genuinely I think like especially for these people who are so concerned with individual freedom and liberal values and they then conclude this by importing the most illiberal kind of way of thinking mm. you could imagine for our current climate and I, I just doesn't compute in my brain and of course then people will tell me that the fault lies with me and of course that might happen uh, but I think I think I've seen this pattern so consistently yeah, I mean, that you, it's, it's, it's you've read the manuscript already you know, yeah going on yeah, on yeah that too you know so it, like it's just putting it together and the picture is there and it's very very hard to deny uh, and I think some of these people are just denying it out of um, fear or convenience too yeah. actually I, I think I think a lot of these people know that something here is a bit fishy a bit rotten uh, at, at its core but uh, uh, I think um, I think we can, we can end this still on some kind of a positive note yep because I've, what I've seen, you know, speaking from the Norwegian, uh, um, in the Norwegian context, is that there are still people and uh, uh, on the left mm. that have these classical liberal values that we yep. should have a discussion and not just uh, uh, crucify people yep. for having different, different, different mm. opinions. And you have, for example, uh, you know, the former um, director of the class fight, Klasse Kampen mm. newspaper, yeah. who has been, been really clear about that. Yeah. And also, uh, well, you could tell us about that uh, prize that you got from the subject, which is also on the left, a uh, magazine on the left. Yeah, yeah, sure. So, so I mean, mm. the, it's important to, to highlight now as we get sort of a fan theory at the end. Yeah, here, yeah. There are people that are actually opposing this. Who are, yeah. Who are yeah, that's a good point. Uh, I, I think I, I had forgotten that if you hadn't said it, because, uh, of course, after these cancellations and all this, uh, I just call it uh, bullshit, because that's what I think it, am. it is. Uh, after this kneeling ceremony and everything, we, uh, the five of us who, who wrote this uh, original article criticizing these uh, tendencies, we were nominated to the honorary prize for a culture magazine that's called uh, Subjekt, that uh, does a lot of journalism in the, in the cultures and arts. Uh, and this was a public prize, so it was vo voting based. Uh, and what's interesting there is that uh, we actually won and we were in really good company. So I'd never in my life think we'd win anything or even be nominated for, for anything. But we were nominated and we won the prize uh, subject of the year, or it is like the honorary mm -hmm. prize for, for raising important principal questions about, yeah, you know, mm -hmm. Our entire com conversation. And I th think there were, how was it, 6,000 people voted for you or yeah. in, or in uh, total? I, I think, I, I don't remember if it was 6,000 in total, but uh, what was important is that 
when this uh, voting system is anonymous and stuff, suddenly we won by a landslide of yeah. votes. And that's kind of interesting as well. Yeah. So when people can continue to be anonymous or don't, don't flag their allegiance in public, they vote for us. Yeah. That's, that was very, uh, for me, that was very uh, shocking, actually. I, 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 uh, I not, uh, hadn't believed that that would happen. And I think maybe for the other people as well, and maybe the subject also thought that was interesting that there were so many more votes for us. At least that's what I've heard. So that's, that's a good sign that, uh, and, and of course, as you say, uh, uh, several editors and, and newspapers wrote after our uh, article uh, in support of us. Yeah. And this led to that the smear campaign going on against us, uh, the media was implemented in that as well. So the media kind of, they, they, they accused the media of being useful idiots for far-right extremism and uh, five students that believed themselves to be the common sense of the people and stuff like that. But I guess the people voted for us, so maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe we were more than those other people. I don't know. Mm. But uh, but um, so so yeah, there are a lot of positive things happening as well. And it seems like uh, one of our reasons for taking this conversation immediately was to kind of to use uh, a word uh, the these woke uh, people love to normalize being able to talk <laughs> you know to normalize being engaged in <laughs> in this discourse you know they they love all this uh, all this umbrella terms uh, so but yeah so so that uh, that's kind of a a lighter note and and i think uh, a lot of the 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 worst pressure on social media kind of fizzled out but uh, a lot of the focus shifted from here in Norway down to Denmark. And the same mm. thing happened, mm. where they started to like throw stuff in the ocean, uh, like a, uh, cast, in, yeah. Yeah, a, cast, a plaster cast of a sculpture was thrown in the ocean by the leader of the institute, you yeah. know, in, in an artistic happening. Uh, and uh, what's uh, funny about that is that uh, nearly a year before all these uh, things happened, in Denmark, uh, um, a journalist called uh, Paul Pilgård Johansen, I think uh, is his name, uh, wrote for uh, Politiken. Uh, oh, no, uh, Viken Davisen. Uh, he wrote that uh, the, it, there's a fair culture in the Academy of Denmark. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and this was before our internal uh, dialogue. So, of course, one of the first things I did was send this article. Like, here you have a concrete example. None of you per people can give me a concrete example, but I'll give you one of what happens and what's going to happen here. Mm -hmm. So just have this in mind. But of course, no one cared about that. And everything happened just like described there. And of course, it continued uh, even more in Denmark with the desecration of these uh, costs and everything. And the uh, principal being fired and a lot of stuff like that. You know, Kiyo as a school has had a lot of administrative issues. So in that period where uh, the whole media circus was going along, I think also almost 70 teachers or employees quit or, or had like troubles and were really critical of the school's administration. So I'd think like, um, uh, without sounding too arrogant here, but I think that a lot of the problems that are chalked up to structural racism and, and, and the kind of related uh, conceptual problems really is, uh, uh, if anything, a result of the structural administrative problems with bad communications between departments, between heads and teachers and principals. And you know, it's, it's this, uh, it's this uh, tangled mess of bureaucracy. Mm -hmm. I think that's much more harmful to, to a student's life that, than invisible ghosts that no one can point at and no one can explain the definition of. Well, you know, you know that uh, meme <laughs> with a psychiatrist and the patient and the psychiatrist is saying that, uh, sitting there saying, so these Nazis that you see everywhere, <laughs> are they in the room right now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, it had to be the person asking the questions <laughs> in, that, in that case, I guess. <laughs> Okay, Magnus Van Bo, this has been uh, freaky and informative, mm. and I'm happy to be able to participate in normalizing your, yes. your speech, and it's been um, 
it's been uh, interesting to hear your lived experience. Mm. Thanks. <laughs> thank you for coming to the KO fellas. Thanks. I'd like to thank also our top sponsors, uh, Dean Anthony, Fergus Ryan, Anders Berge Christensen, Alistair Blaine, Eric Glasky, Jared Fountain, Michael Irish, Sean Roberts, and Stacey Evangelista, as well as our non anonymous sponsors for making this show possible. Head over to kvopolis.com slash donate and check out the different ways you can support our show and the benefits you get from doing so. And I'll see you next month.